This is Jack Jackson back again. We're talk, continuing our investigation of limits. And again, we're going to continue with an informal discussion. In the last video, we looked at uh, situations where we were given a graph and we were able to determine some limits from the graph. This time, we're going to be given uh, a table and we're going to use the table to try to determine uh, what the limit would be. So I have several examples and what we're going to try to do here is I'm going to give you the table and you try to figure out what the limit is and then I'm going to go and go over it myself so you can sort of use that as a check. If you need to stop and think about it a little bit then uh, press pause uh, before you go on okay and then uh, you know we, we uh, zoom the video and you can see the solutions. So first we're going to start with this example six. We have uh, ordered pairs in our table, t and g of t. And as you can see, the x's in this, or t's, the inputs in this uh, table here, uh, for this part of the table right here, are lower than four, to the left of four, but getting closer to four as we go from left to right. So that part of the table and the corresponding y's here, g's, would be investigating a, um, uh, a limit from the left. And then here we could investigate the limit from the right where these values here are values that are closer and closer to 4 but always greater than 4 and we look at the y values. So we're investigating the limit as t goes to 4, g of t. What did you get? Well, we can see that in both cases, as the t values get closer and closer to 4, look at the g of t or y values here. They get closer and closer to what appears to be 7. So it appears from this particular one that the limit is 7. I have the solutions uh, written out here. And so the table suggests that that limit is 7. Now, to formally prove this, we would need to know... Uh, a formula and we would need to know some sort of algebraic techniques here but uh, the table does give us a pretty good idea of what's going on okay so let's try another example so here we have n and p of n okay now remember how we order our numbers uh, both in the last example these x values were going from left to right on the number line and in this example these x values or n values, input values are going left to right on the number line. So negative 4 is uh, somewhere right here in the middle right in here just as 4 was right in the middle here and so these guys here are approaching 4, negative 4 from the left and these are approaching negative 4 from the right. So what are these y values approaching? Well, it looks like they're getting closer and closer to 6 as x gets, or n, gets closer and closer to negative 4 from the left side. So this left limit approaching negative 4 from the left, this one here, uh, this limit appears to be 6. Okay, look about look from the right side as the x's or n's here inputs are getting closer and closer to negative 4 from the right side what are these output values p of n or y what are they getting closer close to well it looks like maybe 3.5 now since these are not the same then the full limit does not exist Okay, let's try this one here. Now this time, I don't have the table made up ahead of time, but I have a formula here. x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. If you're going to do this in your calculator, don't forget that you're going to need parentheses around the numerator and denominator here. They're not needed here because this horizontal fraction line here is a grouping symbol but they will be needed in your calculator when you type them in. So if you're going to use a calculator to do this, which is a possibility, um, you could type that in, say, as y1, and then you have to decide what kind of x values you want to use. 
So notice that the x's need to be getting closer and closer to 2. Not necessarily when x equals 2, that's irrelevant. And in fact, you see when x equals 2, the denominator is 0. In fact, the numerator is 2, so you get 0 divided by 0, which is undefined. So see if you can work this one out. You need to press pause and come back. Okay, now we come back. Let's look at this. Uh, we'll come back. Back here. Okay. So, a couple things we may notice here is, uh, let's look at the table first of all. We want x's that get closer and closer to 2. So 2 is right here on the number line in between uh, these numbers here to the left of that red line or to the left of 2, the numbers to the right or to the right of 2. So if we're talking about a left limit, we're talking about x's coming in this way closer and closer to 2. Well, what can we put in? We want to get close to 2 but not be equal to 2. So we could start at 1.9. It may be a little closer be 1.99 or, or even closer still. I chose 1.9999. And of course you could get even closer than that. Plugging those in the original formula gave us 3.9, 3.99, and 3.9999. It looks like the y's are getting closer to 4 as you come in here this way. So if these are approaching 2, these are approaching 4 from that side. What about from the right side? Well, from the right side, we need to get numbers that are larger than 2, greater than 2, to the right of 2 on the number line. And so I used uh, 2.01, 2.001, And of course, there's not a set thing to pick here. Just pick several things, but you want to get pretty close and get closer and closer and closer. Um, these are pretty easy to work this out, particularly if you have a calculator to work out the, the y values. So we can choose some really uh, things that are very close to 2 there and see what the y values or f of x values get closer to. When you plug in 2.01, here you get 4.01 and 4.001 when you plug in 2.001 for x. And when x is 2.00001, f of x is 4.00001. And again, it looks like both the x's and y's are approaching uh, as the x's approaches 2, the y's are approaching 4 from either the left or right, so that limit appears to be 4. Now let's look at the formula here just a little bit. x squared minus 4 could be factored as, as uh, x plus 2 times x minus 2, and then since these factors are the same, we can cancel them out using the fundamental equivalence property of fractions and just get x plus 2, provided that the x minus 2 is not 0. Well, the x minus 2 equals 0 only when x equals 2, and we're taking the limit as x approaches 2. x is not 2, it's only close to 2. So this function and this function here have the same uh, y values. If I just use the function x plus 2, you're going to see that you get the same table. So I think it's pretty easy to see now in the table that we're just adding 2 to all the x values here, and that's the same as taking the original function and doing uh, plugging in the x's there. And so that limit is the same, and the point 2, 4 actually is a point on the line y equals x plus 2, or in the table for that function, but it's not on the original, so that's going to be a hole in the graph, and in fact, the graph of the original function looks like this right here. And you see right here is your point 2, 4, which is not on the graph. It's a hole in the graph. You can see it right there. See it? And so that is a limit point, but it is not a point on the gra actually on the graph. So it's a straight line with a hole in it. That's what the graph looks like. So it would be a solid line if it was just y equals uh, x plus 2, but it's a line with a hole in it when it is the original function y equals x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. So this multiplying by x minus 2 over x minus 2 essentially punched a hole in it when x is 2. And in fact, you can use this little technique 
uh, if you'll multiply, take any function f of x, well, I'll say g of x, and multiply it by x minus a over x minus a, if the original g of x was defined at a, this new function here will now have a hole in it at x equals a. Interesting, huh? Okay. Let's go back up here and look at another, oh, too far. Limits from a table, let's do another example. Okay, I think I've got maybe a couple more. Okay, here's another one, kind of similar to the last one, but kind of different. Uh, the formula actually is kind of similar, but sort of, sort of upside down here. So this time, take the limit as x goes to negative 2. Let's do it from the left, from the right, and then the full limit of x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. And again, this time you pick out the x values and find the corresponding f of x or y values. And then see if from the table you can figure out what these limits are if they in fact exist. Or tell us what happens if they don't exist. Okay, you do that, uh, press pause now, and come back when you're ready. Okay, so we were looking at this one. Hopefully you've taken a chance to look at this. We want to pick some x values getting closer and closer to negative 2. We've got to come both from the left side and from the right side. And, but we want to come closer and closer to negative 2. So I think I've got some of those worked out down here. Okay. So let's look at the table here, first of all. Negative 2 is somewhere in here. And again, this one is actually undefined at negative 2. When you plug negative 2 in the denominator, you get negative 2 squared is 4 minus 4 is 0. And so it is undefined there. But that doesn't matter to us. We don't care whether it, the function is defined or if it's not defined at the point. What we're interested in the limits is what's happening nearby. So as I've done before, I've arranged my x values in the table in increasing order so that they are going left or right on the number line. These coming here, negative 2.1, negative 2.001, negative 2.000, well, a whole bunch of zeros and a 1 there. Let's see, what is that? Six zeros and a 1. Um, we see that those are getting closer and closer to negative 2, but from the left side. If you plug those in the formula, you get outputs of negative 10, negative 100, and negative 10 million. And so we see that this thing is getting closer and closer and closer to, <coughs> well, it's not getting closer and closer and closer to anything, is it? It's just getting smaller and smaller or further and further away from zero into the negatives. So large absolute va larger and larger absolute value, but negative. So it looks like it's decreasing without bound. So we would say, say that this way, that that's approaching, that that limit is approaching negative infinity when we're doing that limit from the left. Now we look from the right side, what kind of x's do we need? Well, we need things like negative 1.99, negative 1.999, negative 1.99999, I got six nines there. Okay. And this time when you plug in the formula, you get positive numbers uh, getting bigger and bigger and bigger as we get closer and closer and closer to negative 2. So as we come in this way, we get 100, 1,000, a million. So this thing is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and, and it appears that it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that would give us a limit of infinity. Now that doesn't mean the limit actually is infinity. That just means it doesn't have a limit, but it tells us how it works. How why it doesn't have a limit. Since these are not the same, the best we can do for the full limit is to say it does not exist, but really, actually, really the best thing we can do about for the full limit is talk about what happens with these uh, one-sided limits because this gives us a little more uh, specification there. Now notice the original one, when if I factor it, x minus 2 over x plus 2 times uh, x minus 2, again the x minus 2's cancel, but in this case, the denominator is still zero here. So whether we, we uh, graph this one or the original one, they will be the same anywhere that x minus 2 is not zero. So they'll be the same except for 
uh, when x is 2. And we see that when x approaches 2, it's going to approach the point 2, 1 fourth, because the limit as x approaches 2 of this, this function, I'll call it f of x, is 1 fourth, because if you plug in 2 in there, you get 1 fourth. If you plug 2 in here, you get 0 divided by 0, and so it's undefined. So this is a hole in the graph. But what happens, this is where x going to positive 2. What about x going to negative 2? Well, that gives us a vertical asymptote. So right here is the point 2, 1 fourth. We see that it's approaching this vertical line at x equals 2, but it's approaching a specific point on there. That's a hole in the graph. Whereas over here, it's approaching a vertical line. Let's see, so this vertical line here, it approaches a single point on there without touching it. Over here, it's approaching the vertical line without touching it, but it's doing it uh, becoming more and more closer and closer and closer to being vertical as we go in toward this line. So this is a vertical asymptote. So there's, you normally graph this with arrows here. By the way, notice by looking at the graph, it looks like the, if the limit as x goes to infinity of this is uh, 0. And as you go to negative infinity, you also get 0. Okay, let's look at another one more example. In this example, whoops, I already showed the answer. Here we go. Take a look at this one. The limit as x goes to infinity of ln of x, natural logarithm of x, divided by x. Now notice, you know, you can't plug in infinity. Infinity is not a number, not a real number, so we cannot plug that in. Uh, we can't, uh, we never get to infinity. So what does it mean to say the limit as x goes to infinity? It means we're putting in larger and larger and larger and larger values of x. So see if you can make up a table of this and see if from that table you can get some idea of what that limit might be. Once you work on it on your own just a bit, and then we'll come back and check your answer in just a second. Press pause now. Okay, so we're looking at this function x over ln of x. Okay, and I have this worked out. I used a table here to help me in the uh, calculator. So I plug in ln of x over x here. And what do I want to do with the x's? Again, I've arranged them going left to right, getting larger and larger. So we want to go get bigger and bigger and bigger values of, of x. So here I use some big big values. I started with 100, then I went to 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, a million, a billion. And so I, I put bigger and bigger values of x in there. Now one way you can do this, say with a TI-84 calculator, is to put your formula in right here for y1, hit uh, y equals, and then type that in. And then go to table setup, which is uh, on our 84 is second window, and put the, this variable, the independent variable, the x, on ask. Always leave the dependent variable on auto. With that said, it doesn't make any difference what's up here in the, in the first part on a, what I'll call an ask table. And when, then when you get to the uh, table, hit uh, second graph, and it will go you to table. And hope, normally this will be empty. If it's not, you can put your cursor on one of these and hit the delete key and empty it out. Then you get to type in what you want here for the x's, and it will come out and give you the y's. So when x is 100, we see y is 0 0.04605. When x is 1,000, y is 0 0.00691. When x is 10,000, I get this. Now this this means actually 9.2. This e negative 4 means times 10 to the negative 4 power, which means take the 9.2 and move 1, 2, 3, 4 places to the left to put your decimal, fill in placeholders of zeros. So that's point three zeros and then the 9.2. When I put in 100,000, it's point three zeros and a one two. 
again, this is 1 e the 6, that's 1 times 10, 1 times 10 to the 6 is what that means, that's a million, and here I get point four zeros and a 1 4. And when I went 10 to the 9th, or 1 billion, that is uh, point seven zeros and a 2 1. And I think you can see by looking at these at these uh, output values that as you go this way, they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They stay positive. In fact, we know they're going to be positive. When you're going way out to the right, x is a positive number. ln of x then is also a positive number as long as x is bigger than 1. And so uh, we, we get positive numbers, but they're getting closer and closer to 0. So that limit is, in fact, 0. Now we also, since we have a formula here, we could actually type that in. Well, I already have it typed in. There it is. And so now I could hit graph and look at it. And mainly I'm going to look at the graph way out to the right. So uh, here I did it in the program called Graphmatica. And actually we see as the limit as x goes to 0 from the right side, the y goes to negative infinity. And then we, it comes, so it's increasing here, nearly vertical, comes up to a maximum. Somewhere in here we have an inflection point where it turns around, concave down to concave up. And now we continue to decrease, and it's leveling out more and more and more as we go further and further to the right. So this is a horizontal asymptote then of y equals 0, in other words, the x-axis. Okay, so that gives us a few examples of how we can use a table. In some cases, I just gave you the table, and you looked at that to see if you could determine a limit. And then, in some cases, we looked at how we could take the formula and then generate a table. In our next video, we're going to come back and look at a couple of examples where I give you the formula and we're going to use these ideas of maybe generating a table and a graph and between the two of those try to come up with some idea about limits and really looking at the formula itself. So looking at the formula, the table, and the graph, all three kind of simultaneously see if we can informally determine some limits then. That'll be for our next video.